Hello everyone, my name's Tracy from Art Fiber Stitch. Today I'm working on a piece of um, eco printed fabric that I did. I like to look at fabrics and see what I can see in the in the imprints on it. Can you look at this one and see? I can see a bear, I can see people, I can see all kinds of things. Look at that. Did you notice the three ladies in there? I think we have a band. So all kinds of things are in there. Even when I remove those uh, wigs and pieces now, I can still see those faces, but I see other things as well. So I have added some, uh, some of a new product that uh, I've bought myself. It's not a new product, but it is for me. And it's ink tents blocks. And they work on wet fabric, or you can wet the actual block and put in um, the the colors and prints that you like I'm using a, a brush to mix water in to add to it um, but really I'm just suggesting uh, background from from what I saw so uh, once this is dry it will uh, is now you can see it's changed color it will be permanent so I love that it's a, an easy way to color fabric so now we start with the stitching and first of all, I've added up a turquoise colour here. And I am using it to just stitch in lines. This is, um, well, if you can't see already, it is uh, lilies and lily pads. And this is going to be the water. So I'm just adding in some lines to make you feel like it is water. The flowing lines there in that lovely turquoise colour. And when I see a shape that is suggesting itself as a lily pad, then I outline that as well so that you too can see what I'm seeing. When you finish with any uh, thread, take it through to the back, do a couple of stitches on top of each other and you're done. That's knotted off. You can trim it and start with another. Now I'm wanting to show you a technique that I thought would really be nice on this and it's called trapunto and that is where you stitch around a shape and then later you turn it over oh, I forgot to mention I'm using a, a backing on this or felt but you can use something else you slit where you did the shape and you stuff it with in this case I'm using a wall and as you can see it then puffs that shape out on the um, on the front side. And so you can't really see, but you will, that that is, is a, a piece that is really um, in relief. You know, it shows up. And then when you have stuffed the pieces that you want, I've done a few little pieces here where I've stitched around and then added the wool. So then you can stitch those little slits close again. And you have a flat surface on the back and on the front you have this padded raised surface and I really like it because you can use it just subtly just as a you know some pieces you might want to bring I have that piece there that I've just shown you that is raised and also the two little leaves uh, underneath it but you'll see now when you have that shape that is raised you can then add more um, needle sculpting shall we call it and when you add a stitch here and I'm taking it all the way through to the back and what I'm doing is sandwiching those two layers together and allowing that uh, stuffing to become compressed and what I have now is a shaped petal with two different sides and that central vein is compressed so that you get um, a really lovely relief shape there now I can still stitch on that that um, section and not pull the thread right through to the back you know just stitching that front uh, piece of fabric and that's fine, I can still get the lines and the, and the colours and the stitches I want. But if I wanted to add some more shaping, 
I would just stitch through to the back and pull it tighter and as you can see here in this it's pulling it in it's dimpling that um, that shape now so that's how you do it so that's a bit of fun a bit of um, extra tactile kind of um, interest that you can add to a picture I'll continue now um, I am adding in some blues I love blue blue is a really good color for adding in shading you know it doesn't have to be black or brown it can add blue is a really good shading color so as you can see I'm mostly using running stitch a little bit of um, seed stitch added here and there if I want to shade or color a particular area but I'm re really mainly using running stitch just a series of different uh, colors that are accentuating the shapes that I want to pull out of this so some of those shapes weren't very distinct and adding this running stitch really does help to show them up what I was intending and I might add darker colors at the bottom where I want shading I might add lighter colors to the top where I wanted to denote that that's the um, the area where the light is coming and some of it like I said is is lovely with these puffed up relief kind of areas and uh, these two leaves down below or well, not leaves but they're sort of outer petals they're, they're in a greeny color they're both in relief as well so it just adds that little bit of textural interest So what you're doing is pulling out the picture that you visualize. You might have visualized something different. And you're just doing that through the medium of stitch now. You've added a few colors, but really it's just um, your stitching now that's, that's drawing people's attention to the areas that you want. When I was a child, there used to be a television program for children called Mr. Squiggle. And it was a puppet that had a pencil for a nose. And children would send in these squiggles, just different lines and shapes on a page. And Mr. Squiggle would turn it into a picture, just joining up the different shapes and, you know, imagining things in those shapes. So that's what I'm calling this it's sort of a an ode to Mr. Squiggle as you can see here I am just adding in a little bit of shading with the seed stitch so we've got running stitch we've got seed stitch and later we'll have a little bit of French knots and that's it that's pretty well all you need I think for this kind of work um, sometimes I'll think, well, I don't like that, that's, that's too dark, or that's not dark enough, and I'll add a different colour in. So I'm continually looking at it and thinking, mm, that bit disturbs me, what do I want there? So this is, this is what we do. And nothing, nothing matters, you can undo it, you can go over it, you can take it out. It's like doodling and um, really, really good creative uh, exercise to do. From that beginning picture that I showed you of um, my fabric, I like to imagine what I can see in it. And like I said, other people will see different things. And that's the beauty of it this bringing that picture out like a sculptor will look at a piece of wood and think oh yes that's a seal or that's a possum or whatever and bring it out so that you can see it too that's what you're doing and this is French knots I'm doing that at the top adding a bit of textural interest as well as the color that I want so there'll be plenty of that that's what I'm just doing is adding it all in now where am I here I'm sort of thinking okay I need to add in a little bit of color here a bit of light on this you might notice that this second lotus is not as vibrant it's sort of in the background it's sort of um, more 
shaded or more faded, more something. Because this one over here on the left is our focal point. It's where we're interested most. I feel like a lot of people are daunted by a blank page and not knowing how to start. And that's why I do like the idea of starting with some fabric that already has marks on it. And, you know, it's a really great creative exercise seeing what you see in it. Um, here we go. Here I'm adding in some dark purple because I'm thinking oh, it needs a bit more... Um, bit more contrast so adding that in notice the colors I'm using are particularly what should be there you would think I'm just going to be using you know different um, different strengths of the one color for that really but I'm quite happy to add in all of these different threads light blue can be a great highlight color just as dark blue can be a great shading color so it's just whatever I think looks looks nice. Sometimes it's great to add a bright colour just to invigorate it or um, a shading colour to send things into the background. It's, it's what you like. Now I've decided now that it's getting pretty dark and I need to add some light to the top. So I'm putting in some white French knots at the very top. And I'm showing the tops of those petals... Uh, with some a little bit of running stitch a little bit of highlighting with white white can really help to add a highlight you know it's um it really does help to brighten and give life to a picture that might be otherwise very very dark and uh, yes yeah, so I really like to add in that little touch of white So I think I'm getting close to the end. I could go on forever doodling and stitching and adding bits and just getting lost in it. And it really is good stitch therapy to do something like this, have it on the go and, and start and finish when you want. It could be certainly added to for a very long time. Just so added a little bit more highlight. Now I've added in this shot because I want to show you the top and what I did later was I had imagined shapes as I had suggested in the foreground that we have the odd bit of lily pad I then used white to just suggest those shapes in the top using what was there um, I really think that sort of finished it off so that's my um, artwork and I hope you liked it uh, my name is Tracy Campbell and Art Fiber Stitch is my business and I really uh, am happy to show you different things and I hope you like it and um, if you have do press like and subscribe and all my links are below.